This is the guts of a dead uh, Hewlett Packard 3469 uh, B multimeter um, that um, it just uh, doesn't really work properly. Uh, only re it'll only really measure resistance, and only then, and even then, really kind of intermittently, and um, it's impossible to zero, and it's it's, it's just dead. So. At this point, it's pretty much parts, but, um, for the meantime, just do a guts video of the thing. First off is this, uh, top board. I'm guessing this is probably, judging by all the operational amplifiers, this is part of the uh, analog digital converter. Um, there's a bunch of, uh, TO5 package, uh, 741s. There's this one, which is a in-house, um, Proprietary uh, Hewlett Packard part number, it's 1820-0196. Um, uh, that 1820 series of devices I've seen in um, at least a couple of other Hewlett Packard multimeters, like I've got a, a, a 3435A that has a couple of, um, or it has a number of um, 1820 branded devices, and uh, Connor Wolf recently did a teardown of another Hewlett Packard multimeter, and that had a lot of 1820 series devices. So I mentioned those things are fairly common in these. It's a, probably just their series for a lot of the stuff that they use for multimeters and stuff like that. Because Hewlett Packard are real turds when it comes to having lots and lots and lots of impossible to decipher in-house part numbers because they're dicks like that. But anyways, so anyways, I'm guessing this is probably just a lot of the ADC stuff. Um, that's a bunch of trimmers, operational amplifiers, a couple transistors, a 2 and 3053s. Um, big resistor, which I don't know if that might be a shunt, but a uh, hundred thousand ohm seems kind of on the high side for that. There's that um, 0 0.24 ohm half watt carbon resistor, that or carbon composition resistor that could easily be a shunt. That seems to be a reasonable rating for a shunt. Then there's a number of these um, Teflon inserts, which are fairly common on. Um, at least were fairly common um, and might still be for high and stuff like this um, those are uh, fairly common in cases where you need very 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 high impedance connections because just ordinary straight printed circuit boards like this any kind of crap or condensation on the surface of the PCB can get leakage currents which with very very sensitive stuff like this can um, cause a substantial error or interfere with circuit operation just various other not happy like that although of course each component needs to be manually formed and fitted because this is not an operation that can be performed by a machine so it's fairly expensive but then again something like this which is probably very expensive new um, it's not much of a big deal then there's this board which is a connection board for the um, display unit which is a separate thing which I think might have some ADC parts in it um, again all the only identifiable I see on this is a, a 7447 um, I don't remember if it's binary or BC I think it's a yeah it's a BCD to a binary coded decimal to um, seven segment driver just a three seven segment displays and one plus one display which is just a, a, a one and uh, a, a split plus sign that can be serve as either a positive or a negative. Then there's this, a um, Motorola part, but that's... You'll often see that where they've got a obscure Hewlett Packard part number, but they're produced by third party because they're standardized. They just Hewlett Packard put a, their own branding on it because they're a bunch of dicks. And then there's a bunch of unpopulated uh, footprints right here, which are, judging by the indicators, those are for over those little polarity indication dots those are going to be for idiot lights like range indication um, type of measurement uh, whatever that were just not fitted in this and um, one unusual thing about this board though is that it's three layers um, and you can see there's a couple of traces that you can see that one right there let's take out this backboard um, hang on. And if I take out this back part, you can see that those same traces are visible through the uh, fiberglass from the other side. 
that's somewhat unusual. Normally, multi-layer boards, you there are a um, even number of uh, layers of um, uh, copper, but that's again just something interesting. That's why you dismantle old dead stuff like this just to see the cool stuff that's in it, and then post it on the internet. Uh, and then this is the other part of the board. It's uh, more 1820 branded devices. Um, no idea what any of these are. But I'm guessing some of this, judging by also the, um, because also there's the analog stuff like more silver mica, like some silver mica caps and whatnot in that. Four pin transistor, which is so unusual. Although oftentimes some of these, uh, the shield or the um, can will have its own lead. But I don't know if that's that or if it's some more exotic type, like it's got multiple, um, multiple limiters or something. Or something exotic. Uh, but anyways, I'm guessing this might be more ADC stuff that's just built into the display unit. Then this display board that it plugs into, this just has what I'm guessing is probably a potential regulator. Another 1820 series device, but judging by what it is and the trace is going to it and from it that's going to be a potential regulator then there's a 1500 microfarad 16 volt electrolytic and uh, four diodes just a standard bridge rectifier and even the diodes are proprietarily branded although they're probably going to be one in 4000 series rectifiers so there, I think that's a wet slug tantalum or wet something tantalum which is a fairly expensive but reasonably good type of capacitor another precision resistor there edge connector and a bunch of wires leading up to the rest of the board or the rest of the unit and there's this main board there's a unpopulated section of it there I don't know exactly what that may or may not have been for probably for a fancier version of this and in the in this more baseline version just left that bit unpopulated but anyways this bit judging by all the diodes and capacitors is probably power supply stuff because there's also these a number of connections from the uh, power transformer going to this so this is probably just going to be power supply as a, a 2 and 30 and this device which I don't know what it is but it's probably going to be a potential regulator or something this device might also be a potential regulator as well and they're just using it as a um, pass transistor for a discrete um, potential regulator Some more diodes, although I don't know, those might be zeners or something, don't know exactly what. Um, but in precision stuff like this, I think because zeners generate crap uh, when conducting in reverse bias, you normally see them with bypass caps just to get rid of the said crap, so I don't know, those might just be conventional rectifiers. Um, but anyways. And there's this bit, it's just transistors and a um, number of silver mica caps, which are expen which are very expensive. Those are oh, usually at least a buck a piece, uh, oftentimes more. Um, but very stable, very low leakage, you know, very good caps, but uh, also fairly low values. Like that's a 12 picofarad, 200 picofarad, um, 15... 39, you have very, very tiny capacitance, but if they're stuff like this, which I'm guessing this is um, uh, amplification and filtering, if you can, if you need very small capacitance, they're very good ones to use. There's a trimmer cap there, 10 megacycle adjust, that might be for some kind of a, I don't know if that might be some kind of a cutoff filter, because I think in something like this, which probably uses a, a slope A, to, a, a dual slope A to D, something of that nature, they generally don't operate that fast, so or at least things in this wouldn't operate that fast. Um, more trimmers, um, more analog stuff over there. Input selector switches and the power switch. And on the back of the case, there's a couple of uh, zeroing pots and this bit, which is the input section for the uh, AC measurements. There's um, these two things, which I'm guessing either read relays or those might be transformers of some sort, but the of some sort. But the uh, form factor suggests read relay. Uh, is um, DC blocking cap for the input. Uh, guessing that might be just signal processing of some sort. 
Um, there are these things were marked Erie in 8005, but obviously this thing was made well before 1980. Um, I'm guessing, but there's no polarity indication, so those might be, I don't know if those be Diax or the construction suggests there might be some kind of precision capacitor, but the construction suggests some kind of semiconductor device. And of course, more um, silver micas. And this very low value, very interestingly constructed um, adjustable capacitor, just a screw with a, a Teflon spacer and a metal sleeve. And just the capacitances, you increase the capacitance by sticking that screw further in and vice versa. And Big range selector switch, lots of precision resistors. I uh, like there's some 0.1%, 0.05% there. And one last really thing of interest is the um, transformer. Just a couple of center tap windings and a pair of uh, green wires which head off to the uh, display unit. And some somewhat skunky, sticky plasticizers running out of it, PVC tubing. But one interesting thing is that this is a capacitively um, shielded transformer. Because what there is is there's um, this wire leading off to the, uh, this white wire leading off to the case. And what there is is there's just a, a winding of this which is just about a turn or so of just copper foil in it. That's effectively an open turn in the thing. But it prevents capacitive coupling between the primary and the secondary. So it's just to keep crap off of the, off of the, uh, from the mains off of the, um, Secondary and then input fuse, polarity, or um, potential adjuster switch. It's just a standard series parallel um, 215 volt pri um, primary winding capacitors, or windings on the transformer, not capacitor, but eh, somewhat interesting.